Hi, my name is Michael Bean. I'm an acting teacher. This is your free lesson for myfreeactingclass.com for today, Tuesday, March 23rd, coming up on a year anniversary of the free acting classes. So if you're like, wait, what? There's a whole year of these? I wonder if they're available. Well, last week uh, I went online and I went through lots of detail. I posted them right here. So if you go to myfreeactingclass.com, you scroll down, to video archive, you say, take me there. And you click anywhere on here, it will take you to the video page uh, and you will be able to see video. There are decision makers, casting directors, directors, uh, and uh, even an interview uh, with a producer and several uh, folks who are have lots of hats. Uh, the uh, guests, uh, actors, other teachers, uh, there are a whole bunch of um, acting videos and uh, then they're divided into, again, different categories. You can find resumes and headshots and um, they and you have demo reels and branding and, uh, and then self tapes. You know, this is where the, the uh, Tuesday lessons, you know, so if you're looking for your, uh, the self tape reviews, you'll find the links all there, etc. So that is a new resource uh, that I want to continue to pitch so that anybody watching these videos is like, what? I want that. Let me see more of the awesome. Uh, the, I can't believe uh, that we've been going for a year. You know, uh, Candy, I think you've been uh, coming like pretty consistently for like a, almost a solid year now. Like props to you. You know, uh, Christina, the same thing, pretty close. Um, okay, let's jump into uh, self tape review. So I have a couple of small self tapes to look at today. The idea with Tuesdays, of course, uh, is we are using the self tapes to talk about camera technique. Uh, we'll start, uh, why don't we start uh, by looking at uh, Tehillah's self tape. Now, this is, I'm going to be particularly kind and gentle uh, because uh, Tehillah was very clear that this was her first ever self tape. She just like, she, um, she did something that we haven't had somebody do before, which I thought was really interesting. And she wrote herself a script. Uh, and so, um, this is her first ever self tape, you know, and I'm going to use it to talk about uh, some of the things that, that go with uh, camera technique. So, if you look at my video, this is the frame, the uh, the frame of you know, being like what the camera sees. Right now, I'm in a medium close up, top of my head to just below my armpits. This is how close you want to be if you're doing a self tape. If you are uh, now, this is what I see from actors all the time, uh, as I see what's called a medium shot. I think actors are more comfortable here, uh, and it's not, it's not bad, you know, certainly if there, I'm like doing physical action, you know, then maybe it's important to see this much of my body. In a medium close up, you're going to see my eyeballs larger and that's going to make you, uh, make it seem like you can feel more of what I'm feeling. Uh, so most of your tapes for medium close up. The other thing that I see in tapes all the time is this, you know, with all the space on top of your head. And I think that it comes from this impulse to put your eyes right in the very center, you know, of the frame. I think that must be it. People are just like, oh yeah, I'll just put my eyes right in the middle. You know, and in general, what you want your, is your eyes here about you know, a third of the way uh, you know, from the top, right? So basically you just you know, don't have to cut off your fancy hairstyle if you got a fancy hairstyle, but you know, if it's too fancy, then I don't know, maybe cut off some of it. You know, uh, we wanna see your face and we wanna see your eyeballs as close as possible. So, uh, neutral backdrop and some kind of light reflected in your eyes. So I'm doing this, I've got it really easy here. And so ta-da, this is me dead inside, Michael Bean dead inside. Uh, generally speaking, the light reflecting your eyes is what makes you look like you're alive. Uh, Candy and Christina are like, yeah, yeah, we've heard this 50 times already. Uh, so here we go. Let's move on to self tape. So this is from uh, Tehillah, who is in uh, Trinidad, Tobago, uh, which I had to look up on a map. I don't know if uh, y'all are like, oh yeah, of course, I know exactly what it is, but So the first thing uh, that we see here, you know, is great eye light. You know, the eye line, the uh, line between her eyes and what she's looking at is right close to camera, which is exactly what you want for a self tape, uh, right? She's in the center, you know, and again, I think that you know, just because this is her very first one, she did that intuitive thing and you can see she put her head right in the middle of the frame. You know, so Tehillah, if you do end up watching this, you know, I would recommend just tipping down your camera uh, so that uh, the, you and, and moving physically closer to it. So you just see the top of your head to just blow your armpits and even moving you closer to the camera or even better the camera closer to you. Because then we also uh, won't see these fixtures up over your head. And you wouldn't think they would be distracting, but they are. 
uh, at least my eyeballs end up going, oh, it's one of these cool loopy things. You know, and uh, you want to make it as neutral as possible so we're looking at your eyeballs as much as possible. Uh, so one of the things uh, that's happening here is it, it sounds like, and I could be wrong, it sounds like Tahila is um, running her lines with a recording of herself. Uh, it sounds to me like she is running lines uh, with a recording and not with a person. This is a fantastic reaction, by the way. Uh, and so the, uh, the recording is somewhat closer to her device uh, than she is. There's also music in the background. Both of those things are making it slightly hard, uh, at least for me, to hear Tehillah. And so after I liked, you know, and framing, I think sound is extraordinarily important, very, very important uh, for uh, film. So that that's one thing. Uh, And so uh, huge props to Taylor for you know, being bold and for uh, sending us a self-tape to look at. You know, the, uh, again, you know, eye light is great, you know, the background is great. You know, just move everything a little bit closer, tip it down you know, so that it's uh, you know, just head and shoulders. One of the things uh, that I think is really useful about this, uh, Taylor, and something that, that I'm uh, learning or noticing uh, watching this you know, is that the react your reactions are so easy and natural. So in this, I think because you wrote the script and it was all you, and so it was um, all things that like felt really easy, felt really simple. Um, you're coming across you with a lot of ease. You know, and I, I want to point out to everybody watching that ease comes across on camera as confidence almost always. So just look how look at this sort of big, open, clear smile. There's nothing forced about the reactions here, you know, and uh, we are getting her sort of being quite animated right, in a way that's really wonderful, but is not forced. And so this is a kind of a great baseline, you know, for uh, any of the acting that comes after this. You know, so I, I think um, that the that this is a great choice for like a first ever self tape, you know, because it's my hope that Taylor will be able to go back and look at this and go, okay, now that I'm doing lines that other people wrote, am I as animated? You know, am I, uh, is the, like, is my face as animated, is my body as animated, is my voice as animated? You know, and, uh, and you can hear that she's not projecting at all. You know, so, and again, I think that that comes from the fact that like, she literally just sort of wrote down some lines that seemed like a thing that she would normally say. You know, and the goal is when you're rehearsing a script that you're given by somebody else to get to that point, of course. You know, but this is what it looks like when it's just actually something that you would normally say, like, yeah, easy. There's nothing like, ah, I don't know. Um, those are the lines that often you have to practice over and over again to internalize, to get to the point where you find that level of ease. Let's look at Christina sometimes. Okay, so. Character Lines, part seven. Here's Christina. Wow, Christina, the, the YouTube gave you a um, truly wonderful freeze frame there. What can I get you, Zay? I, using a, a pen and paper you know, as your prop in a scene can be super, super effective. One of the things that I really like here is that Christina uh, actually used a pen and paper instead of sort of pretending to. Um, so one of the things Christina has been playing with is taking these extravagant moments before, right? So there's, you know, uh, what, like 15, you know, almost 20 seconds, you know, before uh, she says her line. Uh, and the and the, I think that that's a great challenge to give yourself. Sort of in the, sort of in the same way that Taylor chose to write her own material, you know, and Candy chose to recreate a scene. Christina's like moment before, yeah, like what's all the acting before the talking? 
Uh, and so that's your gift to this little group, uh, Christina, is taking the thing that you're curious about and practicing and just showing it us how it's evolving uh, week after week. So again, gratitude for that. Uh, let's take a look at this. We've um, nice clear backdrop, you know, like crystal clear picture. Uh, the uh, she's in that medium close up right here. Uh, so once she's up at her mark, she's in the medium close up. So one of the things uh, that you could think about, and this is really just like just a little teeny camera tweak. You're here, you've got the eye light, you're in the medium close up. You for the bulk of the scene, uh, you don't have the eye light and you're further away. So let's say that you were taping this and it was a single line audition. You might want to consider instead of starting back, starting just over to one side. So condensing the action, something that I do with uh, uh, self tapes a lot, you know, uh, or scenes in class, where it's like, yeah, okay, you are you're walking from the back room out to where everybody is, but I want you to take that long walk and just condense it into two steps. All right, so you're going to start on this side of the frame, like, okay, yeah, I'm having this conversation. Hey, can I help? Yeah, you know, and just that little shift you know, can tell the same story. Um, I, I recommend rehearsing it exactly the way that Christina did here so that you're like, oh yes, here's the whole distance, but then uh, it's called cheating for camera. You wanna cheat the action inside the frame. Uh, let's look at number two. Christina warned us before the video started uh, that it was very similar, uh, but we will see what she did different. So here we go. Uh, I see. And so the reaction at the end is very similar, you know, and then, you know, what you were playing here at the beginning was being sort of like happy and distracted. You know, again, uh, we've got you in uh, that medium close up, you know, eye light, neutral, non distracting background, you know, the right, no flashy jewelry, no sparkles on the shirt. You know, so in terms of uh, camera technique, you know, this is totally working. Uh, something that um, that, that I would recommend if you're ever doing a scene like this again, Christina, is uh, don't just randomly scribble because you can see everybody watching it. It's really clear that she's not writing anything. And in fact, she accidentally sort of flashed her scribble directly at the camera. So even if like, so she was scribbling down here and we didn't know that she's like, oh yeah, here's the, like, here's your prescription. It's like, blah, blah, blah. It's just writing. Like, it's not like you've got a pen and paper, just write something down. You're like, play tic-tac-toe, anything. Sometimes uh, when, like when I've got a student who uh, is, is like uh, doing homework or they're doing a test or they're, um, you know, like completing the survey, right? Like if there's a thing that you have to do that's important in the scene that involves pen and paper, uh, usually I'll just make it a game. I'll say, okay, great. Uh, circle the letter A. You know, and just go through your script and as fast as you can circle all of the letter A's, you know, so that Christine will be like, uh-huh, I'm doing my dialogue, but I'm also I've got this task of um, actually trying to circle all the letter A's. And it's so much more effective if you're actually looking through your script for a thing, you know, than if you are pretending to. And of course, with enough rehearsal, you know, that pretending can, can become second nature and you can sort of find the specifics in it. Yeah, but if you've got a script in front of you anyway, if you've got a pen and paper in front of you anyway, um, the doing a real thing will almost always give you a better, clearer, a sort of more specific performance, if that makes sense, Christina. Uh, right, same thing with like taking the order, like take the order, you know, ham, cheese, stupid face, you know, like, the, right, like, so you, you can include in what you're writing something that sort of accentuates your opinion about the person. Uh, it looks to me like with the second one, you were playing with an arc, you know, starting happy, you know, and uh, sort of ending up as far from happy as possible. You know, if that's what you're playing with, you can go even further with it. I think that change from the top of the scene to the bottom of the scene, uh, can be really useful. Now, I have been threatening for weeks to show you uh, the, a self-tape uh, from one of my students uh, that she said she was really thrilled about, you know, and so uh, let's watch that together and then talk about some of the things in there that worked. Uh, then I want to chat with you just a little bit more about uh, to, uh, the exercise for tomorrow. We're going to, we're going to be breaking down the script uh, and then uh, we can wrap up. Okay, here we go.
So I already got this open. Uh, this is from uh, my student, Jess. Uh, she's been in my Monday night adult class for, oh gosh, maybe coming up on two years, you know, uh, they pretty consistently. Uh, So one of the things that was written uh, in for Jess's script is the in the script she was written uh, sitting at dinner and he had just spilled something on her I think you know uh, and so you know, she was like cleaning her shirt and so you can see that she adjusted that to not change the level not standing or sitting you know so she was standing at the back wall or standing a little a couple of steps back from that medium close up you know yes for the first little part of the scene and now that she stepped in you can see uh, that uh, the eye lights even better. You know, neutral backdrop, you know, she's set up her lighting, you know, so that uh, the, like she's positioned it, you know, so that uh, she's got that nice, um, like the sort of bright spot in the center. It's not, you know, washing out her skin tone, right? Like I really like uh, Jess's setup. You know, she's been a long time tweaking it, you know, to get it uh, to uh, be as flattering as possible. I mean, haven't I been nice to you? I offered you a drink. Uh, and when we initially worked this, you know, something that's come up for Jess uh, over and over again as, um, as an actor is that she's concerned about coming across uh, to, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember her word for it, uh, ed, like too edgy, you know, and, uh, but you can see that in this tape, the personalization, you know, the way that she is approaching the relationship, you know, with this guy in the scene, you know, is is really alive. There's a lot of innocence to it. The character in the breakdown was written as sort of like being the the heart of the show, you know, somebody who uh, was just like a bright spirit and you know, uh, and enlivened everyone. So. I want to. This is the front door. Okay. Okay. Put my hand on the door. Am I holding it? Yes. Go ahead and open the door. Yeah, and so in the script, there's an unflattering freeze frame. In the script, uh, it was one of these sort of magic realist things, you know, where it's like he, the guy she's talking to has this you know, room he goes to, but nobody else can see it. You know, it's, uh, and so it's unclear whether it's in his mind, you know, uh, or it's an actual thing, but she, uh, she's like the one person who he lets in. And so at this point in the script, it says that she opens the door, you know, and then it, like, it's full of, it, it, like it's this giant magical place. Um, and, and so she's supposed to like open it up and be full of wonder. And it's unclear reading the script, you know, whether uh, it is, whether it's imaginary, you know, or whether it is, you know, quote unquote real, you know. And so what we decided to play with when we were workshopping the scene uh, in prep, you know, was that it didn't matter. Like it, it, it truly doesn't matter if it's an allegory, you know, for their relationship is just sort of symbolic, you know, of like them getting to know each other and him letting her in emotionally. And that's how they're choosing to show that visually. Or if it's really a magical thing where it's like, oh my God, there really is a magical room. You know, but that either way to just treat it as, uh, as though it was real. You know, and I believe that then they like, they look in a mirror and then he grabs her and they ballroom dance. You know, so there's a lot of action written in you know, that we needed to find a way to sort of include the spirit of, you know, but wouldn't quite work with that sort of first 
suggestion that I often give, which is like, do it exactly like it says in the script or try and keep it all out of frame as your sort of first two options. And then option three always is like, okay, well, can I alter the action to keep the spirit of it, you know, the, right, not discard it entirely, but just change it slightly and make it work. Right, so uh, breath, she's physicalizing it, and then also she's finding something to make it real for her. Right, so uh, all three of those things are useful, and I don't think any one of them works by itself, you know, but together they give the strong impression of uh, the emotional reaction that she wanted to build into it. And, and she was, it was very important to her that she find something honest, because when she initially approached it, she was like, ah, it doesn't, doesn't, it's imaginary, it doesn't work for me. Right, so really good use of the frame here. Right, you saw that she took that step back when she was really taking the room, and now that it's there's this sort of intimate and the connection with the guys building, she's stepped in. Not a lot, you know, it's not like her face is sort of filling up the frame, but you wouldn't think that that thirty centimeters of movement would do so much to tell story, but it really does. A private space that's just you share with. Them. Close. I feel like I know everything there is to know about me. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but all day I'm just smiling at people. The, that's something again that I uh, so I, oh right so first you know, uh, for Jess yay applause uh, the uh, so uh, the, that use of movement right sort of like knowing where her mark is and being able to move back and forth right that sort of um, you know thirty centimeters sixty centimeters you know sixty from you know uh, side to side thirty from, you know uh, back to front. You know, can do so much in terms of helping convey emotional information. You know, and there's so much out here you know, in the connection with the other person. So that's some of the stuff that is kind of the most alive. Now, uh, for tomorrow, we're going to be breaking down a script, which we haven't done in a while. I'm going to see if I can find a good, you know, uh, maybe like sister sister scene because it's been uh, mostly ladies showing up to class. And then I'm going to make sure that that's available. On the website, I will show you where tomorrow, uh, and so that's uh, going to be part of the uh, uh, part of the self tape invitation for next week. So, of course, by all means, you can do anything that calls to you. You can do a single line of dialogue from an exercise that's posted uh, on the My Crafting Class uh, website. You can you know, do a, a recreation of an existing scene like Candy's done a couple of times. Uh, you can write your own scene, you know, for Get that kind of baseline, you know, who you are, like you saw to now that you've seen Tahila do it, maybe like, oh, that's what I want to do. Or uh, you join us for tomorrow, and we're going to break down the scene in detail. Uh, and then uh, you can just throw a copy of that on tape.
Yeah, and so take the risk of doing something that's a, a page or two of dialogue. So tomorrow, I will also talk a little bit about sight reading, which is a tool that you can use when you're taping, especially if you're taping, you know, on a computer. You know, something that's large enough that you can have the person's face and then the script underneath it. Uh, and so uh, I'll uh, I'll go over that again. It's been I don't know. I think it was last fall, last summer maybe. Uh, that I last went over sight reading. It can be enormously effective if you're doing a self-tape that has dialogue, just so you're not worried about, am I gonna remember all the lines? Okay. Thanks for making time to play with me on a Tuesday. You know, I've gotta go and you know, uh, check on the kids in the other room before they get too rowdy. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody. You know, hope to see some of you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, and thanks to all the people who contributed self-tapes.